Welcome, Lens on the World. Our theme today is Marco Polo and the discoveries from China. Our guest today, Lilia Dear. Oh, dear, Lilia, welcome to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so uh, she is the artist. She is the artist on the Silk Road. Um, so you are also the painter and uh, yes. printmaker <laughs> or the author. Exactly. Could you introduce more about yes. yourself? Um, uh, Silk Road art, which I am doing, consists of uh, a number of paintings which describe travel on old Silk Road. Mm -hmm. As well, I do videos, uh, prints, and other techniques. Mm. And uh, um, only uh, this year, I exhibited uh, this theme in uh, UNESCO Venice in Italy, then um, in uh, <coughs> Confucius Academy in uh, uh, China, in uh, Guiyang in China where I got a golden prize. And uh, also, um, it was event this uh, um, fall in the Library of Congress in Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. um, soon, actually, uh, we will be showing the image of, of uh, my uh, painting yeah. of wow, the Silk Road. Wow, you have uh, done a lot of work. Thank and you. also Thank receive you. some awards too, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Is it internationally or? Internationally, yes. Uh, also uh, in France for my book Marco Polo, uh, etc. Oh. Yes. I, I've been doing that cycle for the last 24 years before it even was popular. Oh. And, uh, so what is your artwork like? Um, my artwork you will see, but it consists, for instance, here I'm next to my uh, canvas uh, of a uh, map, big map of uh, Silk Road, which was exhibited in museum in Xi'an, in mm -hmm. a city in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> then some, some of the artworks, uh, of course, describe the travel of Marco Polo, for instance, on the Silk Road and so on, you will see uh, mm. through, through this program. Hmm. So it's the is the CNs this the last is recent uh, exhibitions uh, in, in CN? CN uh, was uh, three years ago, oh. but uh, um, uh, last exhibition was in Guiyang uh, this year, hmm. and uh, <coughs> CN is important actually for uh, the Silk Road, right? Because first of all, that was a. Uh, uh, 3,000 old, uh, uh, 3,000 years old city mm -hmm. and ancient uh, capital of China. Right. And it was a place where originated the Silk Road mm. uh, under the <coughs> Han Dynasty. Mm. Han, uh, as far as 130 BC, so that means uh, more than uh, 2,000 years ago. Mm. See, uh, I, I have been there, you know, Xi'an uh, is really Great. Uh, so was uh, even the wall, you know, is very yes. thin. Yes. You know, car and exactly. you know horses. Yes. All people can walk or yes. drive on the wall. In, in the city, still exists uh, some uh, remains, some old uh, buildings. Of course, today is modern city, but uh, some of the old uh, uh, buildings still exist from the time of Marco Polo or before. Mm. And. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, what I like to point out is that uh, also the uh, city of Xi'an is known for terracotta soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, although that was before time of Marco Polo, a long time before, but uh, they've been uh, excavated and uh, <coughs> in, well, last uh, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's something very exceptional. Mm. It's a, there exists a big museum there. You mean that the CIS <coughs> was the you know start point of exactly. the Silk Road? Do you yes. know exactly exactly where the location is? Yes, um, I was at the plaza in Xi'an, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a big scul sculpture there, and uh, that sculpture uh, shows. Uh, I'm actually sitting next to the, that starting point, and I'm pointing uh, on it. Mm. Um, Okay. The, uh, they will be probably showing that image now. Uh -huh. uh, I'm I'm showing the the image of starting point of the Silk Road. Okay. So, what are your Im impression on the ter terracotta? Oh, terracotta soldiers! It's uh, fantastic uh, because it it uh, uh, shows uh, 
thousands of those soldiers which are in uh, natural uh, size uh, sculptures yeah. and uh, which were actually made to protect emperor after he dies. Right. The terracotta I, I learned, you know, is all the terracotta, the faces all are different. All are you different, know, all, yes. All different. So even you don't know who created, they just like kill the people so after they create. Okay, that's starting, starting point, point, yes, of, starting silk point road. of the Silk yeah. Road. Yes. So what attracted you, what attracted you to do the work on the um, Silk Road? Well, uh, there are many elements. I always liked, uh, for instance, Celadon porcelain and uh, Chinese ink paintings. Mm. A and then uh, I traveled uh, several times to Venice. Mm -hmm. And uh, when was a celebration of fi 500 years of uh, Columbus discoveries Amer discovering America, mm. I learned that he was inspired by the book of Marco Polo. Mm -hmm. So I read the book of Marco Polo, uh, his travels on the Silk Road all the way to China. And I was very impressed by the descriptions uh, and uh, I was inspired. So I decided to make a number of paintings and artworks mm -hmm. uh, which will represent that uh, uh, historic uh, trip. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how do you think uh, Marco Polo's trip? Do you think all just the truth or? Well, um, it must be uh, at least some, some, point, uh, some people doubt that he traveled all the way to China. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's suppose if he didn't, uh, mm -hmm. then he was uh, still a merchant definitely and he did part of the, the road. But he was uh, certainly in contact with many other merchants, mm -hmm. which would maybe tell the stories. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, there is no proof that he wasn't. Mm. Uh, in his book, he describes uh, that he was, uh, uh, as a young man, um, employed in diplomatic service of Emperor of China. Mm. And that uh, he stayed there more than 20 years. He spoke four languages. Mm. So, uh, both possibilities are true, but uh, he was a merchant and he knew a lot of things uh, and he brought a lot of knowledge from, from China to, to Europe, for instance, knowledge about geography and other things, mm -hmm. which uh, is never contested okay. by anybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> so where um, is uh, Marco Polo originally from? Uh, Marco Polo is originally from Venice and his house still exists. Uh, it's called Il Milione. Mm -hmm. um, and it's close to Bridge Rialto. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Il Milione because he, he was uh, uh, actually telling million stories about his, his uh, voyage. Oh. But uh, uh, the, the thing is that his book uh, uh, was made when he was imprisoned um, by, uh, it was naval battle with the rival city and he, he participated in the battle with his ship uh, after he returned to Venice from China and he was imprisoned and then in prison he was telling his stories. Um, and at that point uh, was, uh, well, there was present actually a writer who was a professional writer, Rusticello da Pisa, and uh, he recorded uh, uh, with, uh, he, at that time books were written handwritten mm -hmm. manuscripts mm -hmm. because printing press still didn't exist. And then uh, that's how it was described for first time and recorded travel on the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. Do you know where the, the book was saved somewhere? Yes, uh, the book, uh, original book was written in French and it's saved in Bibliothèque Nationale de France in, in oh. its mu museum institution in, in, in Paris. Yeah, I really like your artwork. How would you describe your artwork or <laughs> your style? What is this, your style? Well, uh, my artwork actually is um, uh, tracing this Silk Road is figurative, uh, but I'm not showing the faces because uh, uh, they're lost in memory mm. uh, of the lo long time ago past events. Uh, however, uh, I uh, uh, put emphasis on, for instance, uh, atmosphere or events uh, or clothes uh, which those figures are wearing 
to give impression of silk and uh, special. Oh. What is elements. your favorite items? I mean, what are your favorite things you, you like to, to do in your painting? <laughs> everything is a favorite? <laughs> no, not everything. Okay. Uh, uh, I, uh, well, I, I like to, to do this uh, Silk Road story because it's, uh, it's oh, a narrative, so story. It's narrative way. Uh, actually, it, it is like almost like a movie. Uh, it shows uh, in chronological way through the paintings people can travel and imagine uh, the travel. Mm. Now, oh, I like to tell that on the Silk Road, uh, they have um, been trading mostly uh, silk because mm. it was very light mm -hmm. and also because it had a great market value. Mm -hmm. It was very expensive and it was sold mostly to royal families which loved silk and also uh, to very rich people. But besides silk, uh, was, uh, we have sold uh, um, also spices, mm -hmm. precious stones. Mm -hmm. I uh, read salt even from China mm -hmm. and uh, uh, special wood, special... Uh, mm -hmm type of food and so on. So I mean, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of trade, uh, you know, along the Silk Road. What is the medium for trade? Is it money or just silk or something else? Just when the people treat each other, so I give you this, you give me that. What is the media? Well, uh, they, they've been ex uh, doing exchanges of uh, different monies along Silk Road existed uh, different Because money. a lot of several countries, right? Yes. Whether the money is the, just one? No, they, uh, every, every region had their own money. Oh. They probably have been trading and buying from each other different products and so. Mm. That's how it, they trade it, but exist different types okay. of money. Wow, wonderful. So let's continue to the next segment. So thank you for, the, um, you know, is the first impression on the Silk Road. Um, then, uh, so let's see, don't go away. Please come back. But they didn't show the video. Sorry, I forgot. Welcome back, Dance on the World. Our theme today is Marco Polo and the discoverers from China. Let's show the video as Marco Polo's in the, uh, trip in the journey in Venice. Marco Polo belonged to a family of Venetian merchants. Even today, near the Rialto Bridge in Venice, you can see the remnants of their house. Its name, Il Milioni, comes from the millions of stories that Marco Polo told about his travels. Marco Polo traveled to China at the age of 17 with his father Nicola and uncle Matteo. He left Venice. Okay, uh, so Sid Marco Polo was born in Venice, right? Yes. Um, what is what are the travels like, you know, on the, the old Silk Road? Is the term old Silk Road and it's different with new Silk Road? Uh, old Silk Road was uh, actually, which uh, was uh, since uh, thousand, uh, I mean, 130 BC mm -hmm. and lasted uh, until 15th century. Mm -hmm. And the new Silk Road is uh, now. 
uh, New Silk Road is a big economical e exchange uh, which is starting from China through whole Asia towards Europe and Africa. Hmm. What, and was the, what was the travel like? Tra travel was uh, uh, actually done by, by boat and by car caravans hmm. also on the land and you will see the video about it. Okay, let's watch a video about the boat and the caravan. The merchants of the Silk Road traveled by caravan most of the time, but when possible, transported goods by boat. Marco Polo describes single-decked Chinese junks with numerous individual cabins for merchants. Many bigger boats could carry 6,000 baskets of spices, which would travel typically from the China Sea to the Arab port of Hormuz. When Marco Polo returned to Venice from his long journey in China, he purchased his own boat to help in the fight against rival Genoa. In the Middle Ages, traveling on the Silk Road was done with caravans of horses and camels. European merchants often traveled to Constantinople on the Black Sea where they would meet other merchants coming from Asia and the Middle East to trade. This, is it, is it dangerous? Well, this uh, travel was quite dangerous uh, because uh, sometimes robbers would attack caravans and uh, kill merchants and uh, take uh, their cargo. But also they traveled through uh, some uh, special regions which were, for instance, big mountains and or uh, uh, they would pass through the desert, uh, be attacked by wild animals and so on. So uh, to make easier travel uh, of the merchants, uh, Emperor of China gave golden passports uh, mm. to uh, such a travelers like Marco Polo, apparently, and mm. his father and uncle had the golden passports. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an old document from, from old manuscript showing how he's giving them those golden passports. But on, uh, on the other side is a real golden passport, which is uh, somewhere in Siberia, still preserved. Mm -hmm. in, it still exists. Now, uh, the peak of the importance of the Silk Road trade uh, was du during uh, Yuan Dynasty, and the emperor of China was Kublai Khan who was uh, Mongol origin, but he was uh, emperor of China. And uh, um, I made a special painting called Tents uh, because um, it, there is a description in Marco Polo's book that he uh, met Marco Polo under the tents of silk, which really st sounds fabulous, mm -hmm. <laughs> tents made of silk. Wow. Uh, it's like... A, dream. <laughs> mm. So uh, on, a, on a travel, uh, actually on the Silk Road, um, travelers would pass through different cultures and uh, those, um, in some of those regions, in many regions, uh, people had different costumes. So I made paintings which is called nomads, although it implies really on diff to different cultures along the Silk Road. Uh, and. Uh, their costumes, their colorful costumes. Tell me more about the nomads' culture. Do you know some of well, them? Well, uh, actually, some uh, those are now uh, those were some of them were uh, real nomads, but some of them were um, the small kingdoms mm -hmm. along the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. uh, Today exists a number of uh, larger and smaller countries, of course, in mid middle of Asia. Mm. Um, oh, okay. This is like the tribe or something. Well, do, do they live? Not necessarily tribes, but uh, some some of them. Even in China, for instance, uh, you have different uh, mm. uh, type of uh, uh, costumes. 
mm-hmm. um, and uh, in different regions. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was inspired by those, that variety of the c- costumes mm-hmm. from the Silk Road. What are other some discoveries and exchanges along the Silk Road? Well, before uh, I start talking about uh, those discoveries along the Silk Road, I like to point out to the image Marco Polo in China. Mm. And uh, um, that is one of the uh, paintings which I did. And uh, I uh, wanted to describe, Book of Marco Polo describes that uh, at the court of Kublai Khan, mm-hmm. uh, where also uh, various festivities when uh, many uh, important uh, dignitaries were dressed uh, with embroidered clothes very richly and so on. And then uh, during uh, festivities like New Year or other uh, celebrations, uh, they would give for a gift to the emperor of China white camels and white horses for a gift. Mm. I thought that was a fantastic story mm, also. Yes. And um, in terms of uh, discoveries uh, uh, which, come, which come from China, um, uh, I like to uh, tell that, uh, that, for instance, uh, uh, knowledge about geography, which mm-hmm. Marco Polo took uh, uh, from China to, to Europe, uh, that was never contested. Then uh, Chinese invented compass, and 4,000 years ago, postal service. <laughs> Very long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, paper money. Uh, because it was easier to carry paper money than uh, heavy gold or, or uh, coins of uh, silver coins, mm. you know. Um, then uh, on the other side, China, for instance, imported from, from Europe. It was a big exchange, uh, imported not only from Europe, but from Asia and Middle East, uh, cotton and wool. Uh, gold, silver, and ivory, probably from Africa, North Africa, and from India. Mm. Yeah. Um, of course, there, it was a, a cultural exchange also, and um, re- many religions also traveled on that Silk Road, mm-hmm. um, and language also traveled. Uh, for instance, the uh, word ciao, which is hello, uh, which Italians use is mm. uh, or Chinese origin. Mm. Um, Yo-Yo Ma, a very great musician, uh, discovered on the Silk Road uh, through the, a lot of uh, um, small communities and small nations, um, a lot of uh, different forgotten instruments and he uh, was playing some of those, and he organized, helped organize uh, those, uh, well, concerts where will be played those traditional instruments which were not played for several centuries. Mm. So that is very interesting to say. So what opportunity bring you to meet um, Yuyu Ma? Well, um, I like his music, and uh, I went to his concerts and so on, and uh, I met him. <laughs> what the concert was happened where? Um, concerts which I saw was in Paris. In Paris. Yes. So does um, does he have any plan to do along the Silk Road? Well, he. I think he had uh, some concerts uh, uh, along the Silk Road, but I'm not sure. Uh, what what are his plans <laughs> mm. now? Yes. Did he uh, like uh, have some uh, exchange like with you about your artwork? Well, uh, he took my card uh, with the image uh, of uh, art from the Silk Road, and <laughs> we talked a little bit. Oh, wonderful! So, do you know what is the ending of the Silk Road? Do you know that? Or uh, you mean in fifteenth century? Yeah. Uh, well, in uh, 15th century, um, existed uh, some some uh, wars around uh, like uh, Middle East, and uh, it was more and more difficult to travel uh, on by caravans on mm-hmm. the land. So, uh, Silk Road slowly died out. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, mm, merchants look for faster road uh, route to East and to China uh, by uh, boat by by the sea, mm-hmm. 
And uh, uh, so that is how uh, it, uh, we arrived to the age of discovery. Uh, for instance, Columbus went to look for a road to, uh, to the east, and he found America. He sailed on to, to the west, of course. Mm. Uh, or, for instance, uh, eight years after that uh, was uh, travel of Vasco da Gama, who traveled to India. Mm. He went all around Africa, all the way to India. Mm. So what you really think about now, they um, discovered a new Silk Road. What's the meaning is? Uh, well, I, I think that uh, um, a new Silk Road, which is a big uh, economical uh, development of uh, whole Asia and region and towards Europe, etc., uh, is uh, is very important, but also it will be the um, new exchange opportunity f for new exchanges in between cultures. Got it. Thank you so much for coming today Thank as you. on the show. Join us. We will see you next time. Then uh, keep watching our show, Lens on the World. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>